Let's dive right into it. What we're going to cover today. First, we're going to cover the one and only purpose of a record label. You're going to hear the answer to this in the next couple of minutes. So if this is the only reason you came to this video, you can skip ahead, listen to the answer and then leave the video. But if you're interested in the rest, then you want to stick around. The second thing we're going to cover, if signing up with a record label provides any added value to you. The third thing, how to approach an artist manager and avoid career suicide. I see this mistake made by many, many artists. The fourth is the secret to contacting dozens of reputable artist managers in minutes. And of course, months more. Before we begin, I want to ex briefly explain my weird video structure, which is comprised of an intro, verse, chorus, and outro, exactly as a song is being structured. The intro is going to set the stage. The verse is information you cannot afford to skip, and the chorus is if you had only one thing to remember, if you could implement only one thing, then that is what you're going to hear in the chorus section. And at the end, of course, we have the outro, which is the action taking portion of the video. And the action taking portion is actually what makes all the difference in the world. You cannot achieve anything if you don't take consistent action. So let's start with the intro. This is the only reason and the sole purpose of a record label. The label produces master recordings and they also pay the production of those master recordings. That's it. It's simple. I know there are also many other layers underneath that, but the sole purpose of a music record label is to create master recordings and to sell those master recordings. Let's dive a little bit deeper. The record label first will hire a producer, a songwriter, and they pay all costs. And when I say a producer, I don't mean a music producer in the modern sense, but more a producer who will be in charge of the whole project. Then those costs, we could divide them into six major categories. Studio time, music producer wage, songwriter's wage, other musician wages and times, such as backup singers or um, guitarist or any other musician you may need mixing and mastering now after paying the production cost they will create the master which in today's age it is like a digital file and then they market the song and they do this in order to create an roi a return on investment like any other business does in this world and that is actually what the label does in its most basic form that's it now if that is what you were looking for go ahead and skip the video or go watch a cat video or something. But if you're interested in the rest, stick around. Because this is actually what this channel is about. This channel is about helping you advance forward in your career. I'm not here to talk about myself, but actually to talk about you, to give you information. And I do this by showing you how to create better songs or how to, how to record better, or even how to market your songs better and create a good revenue and a return of investment from your music. Now, if you want to see a cool picture of me, here I am in a studio in the Netherlands where I've uh, recorded a couple of times and we also did a photo shoot. That is my dog, Zoe. Okay, continuing with the verse. Does a record label have any added value at all? This is an interesting question because it depends how we define value. And before answering this question, let's dive a little bit deeper in the structure of a record label. And these are the moving parts that the typical record label will have. I'm going to touch upon them briefly and I'm going to get much deeper into the artist and repertoire manager or otherwise known as the A&R manager because that's the person you would likely want to uh, contact in order to advance your career forward. First we have the marketing team and they are no, in, the, in no particular order, I just listed them. The marketing team is responsible for successfully marketing the music to fans and they're responsible for advertisements, publicity and so forth. So everything that has to do with uh, promoting, with uh, putting music out there, with press releases and stuff, that is what the marketing team does. Second, we have the promotional team, the promotion team. The promotion team is responsible for getting the desired music on popular radio stations. Very straightforward. Then we have the distribution team. 
This department is responsible for the sales and distribution of the music to both physical and digital channels, for example, Spotify. Fourth, we have the financial team, which is the team responsible for finances and also the one who keeps track of the royalties that must be distributed to the artists, the taxes that have to be paid and so forth and so forth. Then we have the media team. These are the people who, who are responsible for the, for the digital media, for example, Facebook, Instagram, and this is a fairly new position. So some traditional record labels might not have this one, this, this team. Then of course we have the legal team. The legal team is responsible for bringing in and negotiating the best deals with these distributors, music artists and other companies. They are somewhat the gatekeepers of one of the first people in teams that you're going to deal with inside a major label. Moving on, we have the production team. And this department is responsible for creating all physical products the company might produce. This includes CDs, LPs, cassette tapes, merchandise, but also printed artwork, booklets, any, anything else you can imagine. At number eight, we have the product management team. Now, this is the department which has a very important role because they must coordinate all the team members and all departments to achieve maximum results. They are the glue that holds actually all the projects together. They have the 10,000 feet view and they keep track and coordinate everyone. They know its department strategy and they make sure that everyone is on the same page because everyone is trying to achieve the same result and that is make the artist successful and bring the music to the mazes. Now, I left the artist and repertoire manager as last because I, I want to dive a little bit deeper in what they do and how you can approach them. Now, the a and manager, you might have heard this term before, are the, are the gatekeepers. Constantly out on the field, searching for the next big hit. Even finding contact information of these guys is notoriously difficult because they don't want to receive hundreds of emails every day with crap music, essentially. They are responsible for finding the talent and often the a and manager also works creatively with the artist. You see, the connection between the artist and the a and manager can be very tight, especially at small companies because they give all sorts of advice to the artists and they help them to, of course, achieve success because the success of the artist means also success for the uh, A&R manager. We're going to see why in just a minute. Now, how influential is actually an A&R manager? The answer is very. Because A&R staff are known to be one of the most influential people in the music industry. So if you're trying to get signed, then establish ties and creating a relationship with these guys should be at the top of your priority list. I'm going to give you more tips on that in just a second. Okay, now, the million dollar question. How to get the contact details of artist managers? Like, how is that possible? You just walk up on them, you call the label. I'm sure like almost everyone thinks about those tactics. So if you want to be successful in finding their contact details, you have to think a little bit out of the box. The first uh, and the most reliable way is to have real life connections. For example, if you have an artist who has already signed at a label, you can ask them to connect you with their A&R manager or with his team. And hopefully you can get your foot in the door and maybe get also signed to that label. That is by far the best option. The second way is through social media. If you browse online on LinkedIn, Facebook, or maybe also Instagram, you will find a lot of a and managers or people who, works, who work in labels. If you can establish rapport with them online, they could be open to listen to your songs, even if they have a no unsolicited demo policy, which actually means they don't listen to songs if they don't come from trusted sources, sources they find that are trusted. The third way, in, and we actually covered this a little bit in the second way, and how to find a contact deal, the contact details of an artist manager, is through studying the social circle, circle. And what I mean by that? For example, if you know that an artist manager works very closely with a photographer, 
and you manage for example to get in touch with that photographer or even with the um, uh, person who works, someone who works together with that photographer, for example his personal assistant. Uh, you can genuinely and honestly create a connection with that person, they might be inclined at some moment to introduce you to the photographer and he might introduce you to the a &R manager, who in turn will lead you to the rest of the layers. Now this might sound a little bit far-fetched, but I know people who have actually done it and it works. It works really well. The only caveat is that you have to be honest with your interactions because if the other person is going to feel like you're using them in order to get somewhere else, if you've hidden an agenda, of course they're not going to like that. Now the fourth way is something you might have never heard before. And it's actually a strategy that it's legal and it works very well, but it will surprise you and how well it works. And this strategy is called Hunter IO. And Hunter IO is a piece of software, actually an add-on you can use on your Chrome browser or any other browser you're using, which scans the internet and f can find the contact details of people. Uh, more specifically, it can find the emails of people. The first thing that you have to do is to find a company. For example, Sony Records, right? Sony Music. Navigate to the website, copy it, place it here. Click on find email addresses. Now, as you can see, Hunter scans the internet and shows you all the available email addresses that it, get, that it found that has the sonymusic.com at the end of it. Now you have 861 more results. If you sign up, and I believe that it's free for the most part, but if you sign up, you can find like tens and tens of email addresses, and it's possible to find also the email address of an artist manager or any other person that you're looking to connect with that works at a company. Now, there is also a fifth way, and the fifth way is by far the fastest way, the easiest way, and the most reliable way, but it's not the cheapest way, probably, <laughs> because I have not decided on the price. Yes, I've created a product, and this is called the a &R Manager Classified Contact List, which as you can see here at the bottom, it says get the email, phone and addresses of the most reputable artist managers in the music industry. Now, I haven't released this just yet, but it has, I don't remember, like more than 100 contact, you know, 200, 300, something like that. More than 200, 300 contact details of artist managers that you can use. Now, if you're interested in this, Leave a comment below and let me know if I should release this and I will drop a link where you can purchase it. I have not decided yet on the price, so it's probably going to be like a low cost dollar product because I really want to help you to advance forward with your career. But I'm not sure if this is what you're looking for, like if you're not interested in it, just let me know. But if you're interested, hit the comments down below. Now, moving on something very crucial is once you have the phone number or the email address of an artist manager what is the next step i mean you just hit them up like hey bro this is me and i just want to get signed to your company or you write a very formal email or you call, call them in a very formal way now i have the answer for you because there are eight rules that won't kill your music career and I'm saying that they won't kill your music career is because many people who don't follow those eight rules, they just burn their bridges. So pay, pay close attention because they are very important. Rule number one, the phone call. First of all, and please keep this in mind. First of all, if you're going to make any phone calls, be brief and get right to the point. Respect their time. Why? Because they don't know you. It's not you're calling, that you're calling up a friend from the old days and you can chit chat for like 15 minutes. If you're calling someone who they don't recognize your number and they don't know you as a person, you have to be brief, respectful and straight to the point. Rule number two, what you need to have. 
If you're looking for a manager, you need to have something to manage. And that is a steady cash flow of your music. Why? Because most a and managers work on a commission basis. And unless you want to pay them a monthly retainer to represent you, 99% won't represent you unless you're making money from your music or if they really believe in your craft. For example, uh, if you look at Avicii, like before he uh, created his big hits, at the very beginning of his career, when he actually didn't have a career, if I remember correctly, he came in contact with an artist manager who really believed in him and who actually supported him and created the first contacts with him in the music industry. So there are exceptions, but that means that you have to be exceptionally good. So rule number three is your attitude. Always be professional, uh, be polite and upbeat when you make calls. Try to be excited when you call them. Try to communicate with the tone of your voice that you really are enjoying making music and that you really are serious about it. Because if you don't believe in your craft, if you're not excited, then why should anybody else be excited about your music? This is very important. Rule number four, if they don't answer the phone, you can leave a voicemail. But if you do it, just leave your name, a brief message for the reason you're calling, and your number and state that twice. State twice your number because you don't have to replay five times the, the voice call in order to hear your number and probably they're not going to do that. If they don't hear in the first time uh, what your number is, they're not going to uh, call you back. Like they get like, I don't know how many calls per day. Rule number five, the assistant. We talked about this a little bit before. If you speak to an assistant, so it's always important to do your research to find who are their assistants, uh, which, people are, which, which people are they working with. But let's say you're talking with a VA or their personal assistant. Again, be polite, leave your message. And if you can develop rapport in the first minute or something, then you can ask them if you can maybe like follow up or what the policy is or see if you can get your foot in the door a little bit easier if you develop a rapport with the assistant. Rule number six, the follow up. Generally, it's a good idea to follow up, but uh, don't, like, don't be a ball breaker, don't be a ball buster, don't call them every other day or send like 10 emails in the first week. Actually, the unwritten rule is that once you send an email or you establish contact, you want to re-establish that contact about 10 days to 14 days after that initial period. So you want to follow up only once or twice, not more than that. And if after the follow up you don't get any reaction, then you can be 99.9% .9 sure that they're not interested in music because if they are interested in the music, they will contact you. Why? Because that is their job. That is why they get paid for. That is their purpose. That is the, the sole purpose of an existence of an A&R manager is to find new talent, establish contact, and boom, make them big artists. Okay, rule number seven, how to avoid career suicide. Stay too long on the phone, you're dead. Say the wrong things, you're dead. Be rude, you're dead. In generally, you want to be very polite, say the right things, and we're going to see in just a second of an example of what you can say on the phone or what you could write in an email and you want to keep your phone calls and your interaction with them short very crucial so what to say instead this is a very good question so briefly mention your name your location your gender of music <laughs> and why you're calling them for Lastly, mention why you think they are a good fit for your music. An example. So, an example would be, hey, my name is Brad and I'm a music producer from New York. I research your company and I see that you present a lot of artists in the genre I produce, lo-fi black metal. I would like to get signed at your label since I believe we are a great fit for each other. I know you're probably busy, so if you have a couple of minutes, you can call me at Insert telephone number, that is repeat your telephone number. 
Thanks for listening and I hope to hear from you soon. Brad. That's it. Simple, straight to the point. You can alter this, you don't have to follow it word by word. But you get the idea. You want to uh, your pitch, you want your pitch to be between 30 and seconds and 60 seconds long. See it like creating a song and you want to get to the hook before the first 60 seconds. That should get your creative juices flowing as a uh, music artist. So the rule number eight, the company. Before calling, and this is going to make a real difference, or texting or emailing or whatever medium you're using, research the company. Like do your research, make sure you're a good fit for them, try to find out the names of the people you're calling, and any other information, if they had, if they, uh, if they had like a major award recently, you might use that at some point. If they um, signed a big name artist recently, you can use that at some point if you get a conversation with them. Like the more information you have, the more options you have, the more tools you have to use once you get in contact with an a &R manager. Of course, if you email them, include a link to your song. Mostly, most people use SoundCloud, SoundCloud. You don't have to master your songs, but make sure they're like properly mixed. Now, uh, the next part is crucial. Actually, I'm saying this for every part because I believe that all parts are crucial. But this is when you are not ready for most record labels. Now, the reason why most record labels won't do business with you, if you are still building up your talent, have a small fan base, or make little to no money, is because they are a business. And it is possible, for example, for Sony to groom an artist and to make them big, but they are not searching for that anymore. They want people who have are incredibly talented, producers, songwriters, singers, doesn't matter, but people that are incredibly talented. Second, have the looks. And third, um, have done the work, have shown to them that they are serious about it. Like anyone can create a couple of good songs, send them to a label and say, hey, I want to get signed. But what have you done before that? Look, for example, at The Weeknd or at other artists of all the effort that they've put, or Bruno Mars, all the effort that, that they put before in training themselves, in building a fan base, in engaging on social, in establishing contact with other artists. That is what the label wants. That's also what happened with One Direction. There might be a boy band, but the label saw that there were fan bases exploding like all around the world. And they just in, in changed that and they used their resources to make them like a world wild hit. Now, moving on, this is when you don't need a, a record label. And yeah, there are some people out there who don't need a record label or who don't want a record label. Now, the first reason you don't need a record label is if you know how to use YouTube and streaming platforms and how to use distributors to uh, place your music online, for example, Lander, CD Baby or Dr DistroKid. Next, if you know how to self-promote effectively, this is crucial because Self-promotion is something that many musicians um, lack. They are engaging their artistic side, but not their entrepreneurial side. And the best way to self-promote is through trial and error, uh, or through using a professional who knows the ropes in uh, marketing. It doesn't have to be someone who knows the ropes only in the music business, but in general in marketing. And the third way is to blueprint success, su successful artists. Meaning if you look at Billie Eilish or Deadmau5 or any, any other artist who has used some promotional techniques, tools, and they have been successful once or twice or more times, that means that you can also possibly use those tools in order to boost your own success. This is not an a road. Uh, this is not a fail-proof road, but it's something that is going to help you um, get more certainty. Now, the third way, uh, if you know how to convert listeners into super fans, which is very important, everybody can just like a band, but becoming a super fan, that is something different. Fourth, if you have the discipline to take consistent daily action towards building a successful career, then you might not need a record label. Number five, if you're willing to put in the work, 
trust me, there are no shortcuts, period. You want to achieve something, you have to put the work. Only you can work smart, not hard. That is the difference. Or number six, if you're willing to expand your knowledge and business skills. And number seven, if you're willing to find and lead a small team to support you. The last part, I mentioned the, the, the small team that, that, that can support you because you probably can do this on your own. You need other people and not only people who are better than you, but people who are better than you in the things that you are not. You might be a great artist, but you might not know at all how to use social media. Or you might uh, be a great producer, but you, not, but you don't know how to mix, or you don't know how to master your songs, or you don't know how to get your finances, or how to establish connections, or you might not be that social. That's why you need a team, and look that their strengths are compensating for your weaknesses. And lastly, this is when you do need a record label. Number one, you need a record label if you want a team behind the scenes to arrange all the moving parts. This means that you just want to get on stage, make music, release songs, and don't think about merchandise and other stuff. The second reason why you might need a record label is if you are willing to put the work but you want the help or connections of a label. Because, again, you have to put the work in, but the label will help you to move things faster, to speed everything up, because of the connections and because of their money. And number three, you want a lighter workload, uh, but also potentially lighter pockets. And number three, if you want a lighter workload, but also potentially if you want also lighter pockets. This means that the label can do a lot of the work for you, but they will, go, they will need, they were going to demand their cut from it, which is sometimes it's logical if they don't try to screw you in the, <laughs> in the contract, because they put in all the work and they take actually all the risk, especially early on in someone's career. Now, let's move on to the chorus section. Chorus, knowledge is not power. What is a smart musical financial target, label or no label? What do I mean by this? It's like, it doesn't matter if you are signed on a label or if you're an indie artist, you need to have financial goals. You need to have smart financial goals. So what is your target? Your target should or could be to be financial, financially stable for the rest of your life. At my opinion, that is the best target anyone can have, especially musicians who struggle a lot with income and with um, making, making ends meet. There are three major steps in order to achieve a financial stability. The first step is to become financially literate. What does this mean? Financial, financially literacy means that you want to calculate your income and expenses, take care of your taxes, you got to structure your residuals, listen to financial podcasts, and understand accounting. Now, you don't have to do all those things, but all those five things are going to really help you to develop a high financial IQ. About accounting, what is actually accounting? Some people might ask themselves. Now, the definition of accounting is the process of systematically recording, analyzing, and interpreting your business financial information. Business owners use accounting to track their financial operations, meet legal obligations, and make stronger business decisions. Accounting is a necessary part of running a business. This is, I find that this is very important, especially if you start to getting like a nice and steady income, and if you have different income sources, that you don't have to rely all the time on an accountant in order to create your balance sheet or in order to make sense of the numbers. It's always easier if you can interpret the numbers, but delegate the task to someone else, than to bring someone else in to do the task for you and you don't know if they're doing a good job or a bad job. Then you need an accountant to check the first accountant, which becomes a mess and it's also fairly expensive. Now, the step number two, uh, the second step, is to focus on passive residual income. And by the way, all those things are advices. You don't have to follow my advice. Those are things that I find that are correct, but you might have a totally different opinion. 
So, focusing on passive residual income. As an artist, you probably don't want to get paid once you drop an album or do a show. You want, you want to get paid all year long. A great target is to try to disconnect your hourly wage from your income. Like most businesses and most professionals in the world connect how many hours of work with the income they produce. And even if you're an artist who, are making, who is making live shows, you're again connecting your hourly wage to your income. If you, if you make a show from two hours and you get five grand or 10 grand, you're again connecting, you're working some hours in order to achieve a financial result which might be a high financial result compared to other people or a low financial result compared to some other people in other businesses. But again, your weights and your financial income, your, your income are connected. And the reason I say residual income and not passive income, and right now I see that I kept the word passive here, which should not be there. But the reason I say actually residual income and not passive income is because your income is rarely passive. All those people out there are talking about passive income, passive income from books, from music, from CDs, from anything you can imagine. But passive income is rarely found. Why? Because you already have done the work for years to make your tracks or your career blow up. You have invested money and time Therefore, it's not passive, but it's residual income. That is a big difference. And the definition of residual income is income that, wants, that one continues to receive after the completion of the income producing work, which is exactly what most music artists do. Step number three is to take control. You want to understand all the checks and know your income sources. For example, you want to understand YouTube checks, you want to understand SoundCloud checks, you want to understand Spotify checks, radio checks, any other check that you might receive from your music business. Understand the numbers, because that is not an art, it's a science, and any science can be learned by anyone. Now, the artist, the manager, and the entrepreneur. As I said before, most people, most music artists, because they're highly creative, they engage only the artist portion. And that is great because as an artist, you want to be artistic and create songs or produce songs or whatever it is you're doing. But in order to make a business out of it, you need to manage your time and you need to see business opportunities and take action. And the artist is too much clogged up in his head and thinking about artistic things and connecting the dots artistically and that doesn't allow him to put his focus on managing his time, on managing his finances, on managing his team. So most successful businesses, actually, I believe every successful business, whether it is run by a solopreneur or it's run by a team of hundreds, they have three major archetypes, the artist archetype, the manager and the entrepreneur archetype. And if you are alone, meaning you don't have a team in order to support you and help you, you want to switch hats between those three archetypes. So when you're producing music, you want to put on the hat of the artist, because that is your creative side. And that's very important. That's actually where your career, career is built on. But later when you have to, uh, for example, mix a song or later when you have to uh, create the artwork or talk to your team or anything else, when you need to manage things, you have to switch hats and become the manager. And when you get, when you get, when you get creative, uh, your creative juices flowing, when you get creative ideas, write them down but don't act upon them because right now you're managing your time, you're managing your business. And lastly, we have the entrepreneur. And the entrepreneur is the person who takes the risk, who loves risk taking, who takes action. And this is the flash uh, with, within most artists because many of us, because I'm also an artist, uh, they don't like risk. They like the safe side. They like, like creating music, but they think, ah, I'm not doing it for the money, I'm doing it for the love, which is fair, like you can do it for the love. But if you don't want to wash dishes every night at your local restaurant because you cannot make ends meet from your music career, you must engage the entrepreneur. You must do it consciously. 
there are courses about those things. There are people who can teach you. I've also have a lot of examples and ideas I can give you, and I might cover this in, in the next video. And finally, the outro section. This is titled, How About You? Why? Because I want to know your questions and your opinions. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment down below and I will do my best to answer them. Next, if you want to influence my channel, uh, drop a comment and I might make my next video based on your request and I will insert your name and your picture if you can send me one and if you want to send me one. I request anything just want to learn and dive deeper in regarding with music. So let me know if I should release the a and Manager classified contact list and if you're interested in that. And of course, hit the like button if you like this video. See you around. <music>